We're floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. Hi, welcome to the Wingman Show. My name is Drew Brown. We hope to inspire, entertain, and learn something so we can all make this world a better place for our children. I'd like to introduce to you somebody who's my friend, my wingman, my main man, and I have a wingman watching my back, Dr. Paul Thompson. Hey, Paul, what's happening? Oh, not much. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Thompson, and you just heard from Mr. Drew Brown, Dark Gable. He's the American dream. He's the man, the myth, the legend, the pilot's pilot, the role model's role model, and most importantly, his royal fullness. How are you doing today, Mr. Dark Gable? I'm doing great, and I'm glad I'm full of knowledge, Paul. I'm glad I'm full of knowledge. Well, we're going to have a great show right now. Check this out. Dr. Paul, what's up, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good today. How are you? I'm popping. I'm popping. The show's going to be popping, man. We got a wingman. We got a revolutionary wingman. Revolutionist. Tell me about him. Yeah, well, we're going to hear about a, a, a a wingman, a very young wingman who's soaring to great heights, and he's doing what everybody should do. He's doing what more people should do. I think you'll like the story. It's inspiring. It's encouraging. It's everything. Everything is good about it. I think you'll like it. Yeah, we're winning. You know, uh, here's some really cool thing. I did Peloton, but I'm doing yoga with Chelsea Jackson. And uh, this girl, (laughs) she's like from North Carolina, I think. I think she might even be from Atlanta. But anyway, she does yoga to jazz, to hip hop. And it is the bomb. So I love my Peloton, Chelsea Jackson. Shout out to her. And also, everybody out there will hear my voice. We're on wingmanshow.com. And if you would write a review on Apple Podcasts, I would love that. What do you think, Doc? That would be great. Uh, And I don't know if you can do that on Spotify or not, but if Spotify allows comments, we'd appreciate them there too. A lot of people listen to us on Spotify. Yes, they do. And guess what I'm getting? What's that? I just got Starlink, baby. Oh, you got it. They well, oh. they just notified me. I had a great friend, a neighbor here. They kind of, first of all, this company, you can't get in contact with them. If you need help, they have a list of questions you can ask, but there's no direct contact. Anyway, my account got messed up and I've been waiting two years for this thing. And my turn finally came because my neighbors got it. And he said, it's the bomb. My neighbor said it is the bomb. Anyway, my man, Dean, he's the bomb. Some kind of way he got in touch with them. They got me back on track and they said my equipment's coming in two weeks. And I know I'm on track because I paid that 500. Okay, good. Well, best of luck. Hopefully that'll make our lives a little easier too. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. All right. Since we were talking about good stuff, let's talk about this BS in Ukraine, this war, this update. You know, Elon Musk is a very rich man. And rich men have kind of always weird ideas, but he got an idea. He said he's challenging Putin to a one-on-one. Let's go for it, dog. MMA, Putin versus Musk. If wars were fought like that, a lot less people would get hurt. This is true. I, it's, it's, it's entertaining. I don't think it will happen. Uh, I don't know about Elon Musk's skills, though. <laughs> He'd be kind of going up against a pro. But let's just let's just go stay with it as it is. A pro, you mean when he was a hockey player and they let him score ten goals in a row? That pro, you mean? Well, yeah. You ever see the movie The Dictator? It was uh, I think with Sasha Baron Cohen. And he plays yes. an evil dictator, Definitely. and he's he's in the Olympics, and uh, he he starts a race and he's running, and the race and he has a gun and he's shooting all the other contestants, and he comes in first, and they put a put a sash around him and the flowers and congratulate him with the bodies around there. That's what I thought of. But uh, yeah, apparently Putin got some skills. Yeah. You well, know, I, I think it'd be a good way to do that. But you know who, who pioneered that? Who? Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. There was a, there was a Star Trek episode that a lot of Trekkies will remember. It was in 1967. But the, the, I think the Enterprise, was Starship, Starship Enterprise in space was captured by this other force, and the decision was made that the captains of both ships had to fight it out. 
to see who whose ship would survive. And they had to be beamed aboard this other uh, on this other planet. And Captain Kirk is beamed down, and the other cat is beamed down, and he's called the Gorn. I don't know why I remember this, but I remember it very well. And the Ayatollah remembers it very well, too. But he has to fight the Gorn. And the Gorn is like a prehistoric, uh, he's like a gigantic crocodile with arms and legs. And Captain Kirk is hitting with rocks and stuff. Has no effect. And he ends up, I forgot what he does. He ends up doing something. He ends up winning because, you know, that's where it's got to go. And he can, Star Trek he can actually, continue. Yeah, he can actually kill the Gorn, but he doesn't. Of course, he shows mercy and he does. But basically, that was an example of uh, of that going. I don't think Elon Musk and uh, Putin would be like that. But it's kind of fascinating. And even if he didn't do it for one battle, maybe best two out of three. three TV didn't start. You know, TV's not like that anymore. Today's TV, he would have ripped his throat out and ate it. (laughs) Probably so. And then been interviewed on a a talk show. Yes. Things used to um, end nicely back then. Yeah. You know, the history of man really is the strongest guy won and the strongest guy won until there were weapons, until he could pick up something. Then the guy with the most art with a weapon won. But then after that, they started to realize that two or three guys, even with bad weapons, can beat one guy. And that's how power kind of grew. Anyway, uh, I hate this war. This is uh sense that they're killing innocent people. And this is tragic. You're watching history. You're watching what we used to read about in World War II and go, oh, my God, I can't believe that. Well, COVID's there now. And COVID is in China, Dr. Paul, where we used to fly. Remember, we flew to Shenzhen? Yes, many times. Shenzhen kind of supplies Apple with a lot of stuff. Shenzhen is shut down. Those were some great trips I used to fly there. I loved it. Yeah, I did the, the shopping was okay. And Shenzhen is also next to Hong Kong because you also have this big breakout in Hong Kong. In fact, the folks in Shenzhen are blaming the people in Hong Kong. You can take you can take a bus from one to the other. I've done it. Yes, it's, it's, like, it's like 20, 25 minutes. 20 I minutes. did it on a flight. I one time flew to Hong Kong and had a transport to Shenzhen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. That. I took the took the family to Shenzhen one time. And uh, well, three of us went to Hong Kong just kind of for the day for a few hours, really easy to do. But the thing in Hong Kong is they've run out of hospital beds. I think they call that a code black. They've run out of hospital beds because of the deaths from COVID. And most of their deaths are from elderly people who didn't get vaccinated. So well, it's going to be hard to get somebody with a mask on today here because, I mean, it, it's really flipped here. And I'm not sure what's going on. I know I wear my mask because I don't know if it's coming back, but you told me this morning that it's now BA2, the new variant that's really bad in Europe, has now come ashore. And yeah. it came to New York, you told me. Yeah, it said New York and New Jersey, and that was dated like three days ago. I just looked at it a couple of minutes ago. So stuff is changing, you know. I just did a trip. I had my mask on on the airplane, in the airport. Everybody else did. There were no fights. There's no high drama. God uh, you know, when I was outside, I didn't. Well, myself. we're going to see. We shall see. I'll tell you that. Uh, how about poor Brittany Griner, that WNBA star? She's she's looking at 10 years for some hash oil, which I believe is medicine any damn way, in a vape pipe that somebody had to tell on her. But it, she's in Russia right now in prison. Right. Yeah. They extended her extent out. They extended her stay, but they can invest. They're going to investigate for another two months till May. They've got till May 19 to come up with something. Uh, she could she could be there a long time or not. It depends on how high it goes. Uh, not a time to be visiting Russia. But again, she'd been there, going there for like the last seven, eight, nine years, playing in the winter because you don't have uh, equal pay in women's basketball. I mean, it's it's a big disparity. No, you told us the oligarchs love women's. Athletes. Yeah, they love. Yeah, they'll, they'll give them a million bucks to, to per, per person for them to play. You know, a few weeks. Well, that's a perfect segue into what we're talking about: March Madness, because March Madness is coming. Women's March Madness, men's March Madness is here, and there's been upsets already. And one Kentucky lost, 
And we don't know when you'll ever hear this. You might hear this in 10 years. But anyway, there's upsets that are a big thing in March Madness. But one of the upsets, Dr. Paul, was a school that I attended first, New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I had a walk-on letter in high school that I could walk on the basketball team. And I went there with no money, no scholarship, no nothing, and walked on the basketball team, didn't make it. Walked on the football team, Division One. never played football before, actually made the spring team, played in the spring team, and then got kicked out of school for grades. I'm sure you made an impression you're still a legend somewhere. Hey, let me, no, I'm going to tell you something. It was one of the greatest years in my life, and I knew one thing was missing. I had to study. This is what I came up with. It was the most fun I could ever, and I couldn't believe that people we t- yelling at people to go to college. This was it, man. I was there. So I came back to Brooklyn. I didn't give him my grades. I went to Kingsborough Community College. I m- played for the basketball team. I actually did really well and got a full scholarship to Southern University in New Orleans. But the point was New Mexico State University, that was a big Division I basketball school, and it was eye-opening. It was back during the Kent State days, even the revolutions. So there was some tear gas going on. It was the bomb. It was like, a yeah. and it was the first time I really hung out with just black athletes. Because mm-hmm. before I went to Lincoln and it was, you know, all kind of athletes. But this in New Mexico, they came from all over the country. My friend yeah. Cubby says I came back like a revolutionist. Like, yo, what's up, dog? Okay. You know, white, all right. White man got you down, dog. White man got you down. OK, I can see I, I, I could but I could see you on a, on a soapbox on a corner somewhere in Harlem with a with a megaphone, uh, not giving PSAs, but but preaching about something. I could visualize that. And for people that don't know, when they talk about March Madness, we got we've got some viewers from outside the U.S. It's a uh, it's a time in March when we're looking for a basketball college basketball champion. They start off with 64 teams and they have through process of elimination, get it down to two teams. The winner becomes the NCAA champion for the year. And it's in a compressed time. Things happen in a period of like two day increments. You know, we go from 64 to 32, uh, a little break, 16, eight, the final four that I think you're going to. And then the final two. That's crazy. But guess what? What about women's? When we were growing up, we cared nothing about women's sports at all. I know I didn't. And until I had a daughter that played Division One basketball and went to the University of Texas, my whole life has changed towards women's sports. Well, actually, it changed towards women's sports when she played high school. And all of a sudden, I became a big fan, and I really was involved. And, it, you know... Women's basketball is pure basketball now because they mm-hmm. just don't have those super duper skills, but they have, I mean, they don't miss foul shots. They just don't miss foul shots and they can shoot their butts off, but they play real um, basketball, real chess passes, real bounce passes. They play fundamental basketball and they are getting good. And you have a daughter that played for the air force. I mm-hmm. had a daughter that played for Texas. Another thing that, you and I have in common, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I was the same way. I never paid much attention until, you know, Camille started, you know, playing for the air force Academy. And one of the good things was that it's, it's a long way from where we live. I was able to see a few games because of my profession. I could go to places and very few, I rarely ran into the parents of any of the other girls because they couldn't just, just show up somewhere in the middle of, of nowhere for a minute. And for a while, they uh, they broadcast the games online. Uh, we watched her play online a few times. They didn't do that forever for a couple of years, and that was that was nice. And the uh, the quality was good. But yeah, they have they play more of a pure basketball. Their fundamentals are better, and they have to be because things with you know with guys, if things get tight, you can just kind of go on physicality to, to compensate for you know what you're not doing perfectly. And it's the same in martial arts. You know, sometimes, you you know, a guy can kind of you can power power out of your power your way out of things. It may not be very artful, but it can it can kind of work. Well, if you can't do that, they have to do the techniques. Right. That's so cool. it can judo and other things. Their throws are going to be more precise because they have to be precise. Because of the right. weight difference. Well, you know, with women, though, 
I've been around women's sports now, big time sports. They're huge. They're big. They're big girls. Oh, some are big. Some are enormous. Volleyball players. These some are, are big girls. Hey, you're talking about sports. What about your boy Tom Brady? He's My boy back. don't want to retire. He's, He's coming, coming back. back. What do you think? Uh, I I think he'll do very well. He said he had some unfinished business. It was called. It was almost like a tease. He's not. He's not the first guy to come back. He still will be, you know, older. I guess as long as he doesn't take too many big hits. Well, they protect the the quarterback now. You touch the quarterback, it's fifteen, and I mean yeah. touch him. There's some really weird calls about quarterbacks, but he's playing in a whole nother sport now. And you know what? Big time people know not to hurt Tom Brady like with a cheap shot. Yeah, yeah. that'd be their legacy. Yeah, yeah. He's like Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky, at, a, at one point, you didn't really want to beat up Wayne Gretzky. That's not good for you. But um, retirement, you know, Daddy trained Ali, and if people didn't know this around the world, my father was Drew Bundini Brown, and he trained Muhammad Ali. And that retirement thing is a real thing. And athletes, especially high-level athletes, they do one thing really good. And they give so much time to it, so much of their life to it, that at one point, that's all they can do. And a fighter, there is no bigger drug than knocking a man out and having your hands raised and them yelling your name. Not the Knicks, but your name. And those people get addicted to that high in front of people. And they take it too far. George Foreman, look how long he fought. You know, there was no need for it. But there's a feeling in that ring that just is, you know, you can't compensate with anything else. And a lot of great athletes have a problem with retiring. Very few retire on top. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you can see where it is, where it is a drug, and they're also getting paid quite well. And these are exceptional people that stand out all the time. Uh, how many people get really get injured, if you know, for coming back in boxing? They don't get How many it. do they get injured? They yeah, get I mean, injured they get badly throughout, injured. Throughout boxing, every time they get hit in the head, they're getting mm -hmm. injured. And I've known a lot of great fighters who are old now, and mm -hmm. it shows on all of them, all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boxing's not, not like baseball. No, and you know, when they say you have a glass jaw, mm -hmm. you are blessed because your body said, whoop, enough of yeah. this. Yeah, when you can take a punch, you, there's something weird about you. Because yeah. your body should be saying, uh-uh, we don't do this. Like that when the champ fought Joe Frazier, in Manila especially. Yes. And they both were about to die. Their bodies were telling them, no. I mean, Joe Frazier was going to come out, but he could not. And yes. his trainers had to tell his body, no. So that's not yeah. always a good thing. You know, I have a uh, a PSA. And this is a PSA I'd rather not a lot of people share because this is really high. You know, both of us flew in the military. We both flew in the military. And this is something that I heard at nuclear school. So I hope I don't get in trouble. But if there is a nuclear attack, this is exactly what you should do. Unbutton your shirt, blouse, get in a seated position. Bend over as far as you can in between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. This has been a PSA from The Wingman Show. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we don't have to deal with that because that is basically the truth. You know what I heard when, you know, we learned how to fly nukes. But mm -hmm. what I heard was, if they ever shoot a nuclear weapon, try to run towards it. <laughs> It may not. Okay, that's yeah, funny, interesting. But... Well, you know, uh, with what they used to say in school, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, I remember duck and cover. So if you're in school, you know, if you're going to school and there was a nuclear attack, what you need to do was to get under your wooden desks. They had, I don't they have desks now. Get under your desks. They didn't say anything more about it. Uh, in a way, that kind of makes sense and that at least you know, the, you know, you'll be protected from maybe glass flying around. Yeah, the chalk yeah. won't hurt you. The chalk won't hurt you. You'll, right. you'll, you'll vaporize, but you won't get hit by glass. Right. 
Well, let's talk about a better subject, a little gayer subject, a little happier subject. And I hope I didn't say gay in the wrong way, because Disney just may go on strike because you're not allowed to say it. And I didn't mean it in that way. I meant it in a happy way. But Disney is about to go on strike because of this don't say gay bill in Florida. And you're not allowed to talk about sexual orientation whatsoever in grade school. And to me, when you when you hide something from kids, it really becomes interesting. That's and if true. they stop doing Disney and this becomes a big thing with kids, that's all they're going to talk about. So I think that you, you have to give an answer to children. They should be coming up together with an answer to give a child an appropriate answer at each age. You know, I get on. I'll be honest with you, Dr. Paul. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Drew. I get uncomfortable with sex on TV and the movies, mm -hmm. especially if I'm with my daughter. I get up and get popcorn. I'm gone. I can't do it. And she's 45 years old. This mm -hmm. is not a joke. I really do get uncomfortable. And Disney's saying that now that Disney is editing some of the gay love scenes in their movies and taking them out. And Personally, I just grew up in this day and culture, and that's how I am. I'm uncomfortable with just everyday sex, so gay sex really makes me more uncomfortable. Right, because right. we, I mean, we're, our our time frames of, uh, are, are very different. You know, when I went to school, it was it was there was nothing about nothing. You know, sit up, shut up, do what you need to do. Uh, there was no real indoctrination towards anything. It's really actually. There's no coverage of, of a lot of basic history, really. It was just enough to, enough to get by. And it seems as though the information that's coming, just general information, causes a lot of angst in people, you know, for different reasons. This is mostly about uh, basically the schools, curriculum in schools, as opposed to, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, which are basics, and which a lot of folks are falling down on and we're getting into political sexual things. And as a result, you've got a lot of folks who are very skilled at talking and giving their opinion, but in practical life situations, not scoring so high. So I think there's a, a school of thought that says, you know, these things may be interesting, maybe you want to cover them, but do you have to cover them all in school? Does the schools have to show all these things? Oh, uh, well, you know, there are a lot of parents that don't teach their kids anything. And sometimes true. this is all the kids learn. And, and you know, I, I'm not going to put my beliefs out there, but I believe God made everything. So I, I I'm going to end it on that one and talk about something else with school because you brought it up. And that's, you know, the historical black college and universities have been getting bomb threats. And they've been getting bomb threats on the first day of Black History Month. And to me, if you really want to know the truth, this is the first time crackers are enemy. And that doesn't mean the color of your skin It's people who don't like black people. These people are finally hitting the institutions that would stop black people because you can make it in America with an education. And these people are finally knowing that. So this is scary that they're going against our colleges. But. Our vice president got them some money. So now these black institutions can get some money for security, for mental health issues. But that's a big thing. I, I believe that our HBCUs are our future. You know, I come from one. I, a lot of people come from one. You should see now they're playing in the NCAA. Yes. They're playing the number one teams, but they're playing. And so they're making some television money. What do you think about the HBCU uh, threats? Well, threats, you know, in terms of threats, institutions, uh, they've always threatened ch churches forever. And the churches are also institutions of, of, of higher learning and culture and training. So this is nothing, though. I think it's just ex it's just expanded to a different uh, to a different genre, to be honest with you. Really? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, I won't get to the was it the 14th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham. And four little girls. I think churches and schools are totally different. They are. They are different, but they they house a different population. This is not a population. These are not street people. These are typically not threatening people. 
Okay. Correct. Well, talking about school, you know, in these HBCUs, let's get a little technical here. A lot of them are coming out with non-technical degrees. And so a lot of them are falling short on getting good paying jobs. You know, there's a big difference between coming out with a social degree and an engineering degree. Yes. You know, you're talking about 20,000 or 90,000. And one of the things that we need is we need our black or underprivileged, actually, I don't like saying black, anybody who doesn't have a chance in the beginning. We need those people to start getting technical degrees. Mm -hmm. And if we, we put some more engineers and mathematicians and doctors out there, that's where the money is. Not always in just gym teachers. And I'm not saying everybody goes to be a gym teacher or mm -hmm. your favorite subject, underwater basket weaving. Yes. But Which I would, and if, if they had a degree, I, I would, I would, if I could get a certificate in, I would study just to have it. I'd go for that uh, now. I wouldn't yeah, start with that. I'd do it. I mean, I'd do it now. I would do it now. Even though know, like a few weekends. You have a, a wingman that really means something to what I just said about really breaking the barrier in America. And that's becoming educated, having a good job. You know, if you have a good job in America, they don't want to fire you. The only person can stop you today is yourself. I really believe that. And if you're the best at something, you'll always have a job. You know, making money is easy if you put, not easy. Making money takes a lot of hard work. And the best way I think to make that money and to work hard is find something you love. And when you have purpose and you love something, man, you can go at it. And you, you'd be surprised at the things you do that you have passion for. Tell me about the wingman. You know, wingman is a, is, is a young man named Elijah Priestley. He goes to college. Guess how old he is. He's 14 years old. What? He got a full ride at the age of 11. Full ride scholarship, meaning everything is paid for at the age of 11. And he goes to a school that you might have heard of called Southern University. Southern University. Southern Sumo. University. HBCU. Yeah. He goes to Southern University. At age 11, he got the full ride scholarship. He's, he's, he's a ripe old age of 14 now. And he's studying what? Chemical engineering and physics. I assume one is a major. I'm, I'm going to assume he's a, a major in chemical engineering and minor in physics. You'd be taking physics anyway, but in a big way. And he's just he's just a young teenager. This is an example. And if you read his write-up and bio, he wants to do a lot of other things. This is just a, a beginning for him. And we covered uh, someone earlier, uh, a young lady that was kind of a basketball phenom and also a genius, too, who could do everything. She won. In fact, I forgot her name, but she won the spelling bee recently. That's correct. We covered that again, young, about the same age range. I think she was also 14 now. So there are a lot of things you, you can do. And what you said, you need to produce more engineers and technical people. Important thing there is that that happens best when you have a good early education, a good setup. It's very difficult to be, okay, I want to be a physicist. I want to do this. You know, I want, you know, you've, you got to have a background. If you remember the, the movie, An Officer and the Gentleman, I'm going back a little bit with, with Lou Gossett Jr. and Richard Gere, who wants to be a Navy pilot, and he has to go through this Marine Corps drill instructor first. Love the movie. He's given a hard, he's given him a hard time. And Mayo, Mayo, Zach Mayo, why are you here? And he says, sir, I want to fly jets. And Lou Gossett says, my grandmama wants to fly jets. You know, I, I, I remember that for some reason. Is that maybe true? Grandma may want to fly jets, but the, the better background you have, the more likely you are, you are to get, achieve your dream. So have the background. Start early. Don't wait to start late. You can start anytime. It's easier and better to do it early in life. And this young man is obviously doing it earlier in life. That's correct. But I was bringing something to a story that you said when you were in engineering school, your teacher said you can forget about that fun. You can oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you paid up front like a lot of people yeah. go to college and they, you know, have nothing but fun in college. They don't do much and they want to wonder why they don't make as much money as some other people. Well, your engineering degree took a little bit more time and effort. You paid for that. Right. On the front end. Yeah, because and one thing he also said, Dr. Lewis, just passed away a couple of years ago. Basically, all the things, because they had to give this 
mandatory presentation at the engineering school. And they all did this, the fraternities, this, these activities. And at the end of it, he says, all the things you saw are great. You will have time for none of them. And he was right. But he also said, and he's true, when it's all over, the parties will still be there and you will have time to go to them then. I found that to be true in life. Yes, and you go to good parties now. That's the thing. You're not going to rent parties no more. Yeah, no, and those words were spoken to me just about 50 years ago. I found them to be true. Most things that people like that back then said, I found to be true. Yes. My mom would say, don't be so heavy. And my dad would say, slow down, sneezer. He called me sneezer because when somebody sneezes, somebody says, God bless you. That's interesting. Thank you once again, Dr. Paul Thompson, my friend. Thank you for your love, your time. And that's something that we won't ever get back. I want to thank all the listeners, too. Thank you so much for doing the show, Dr. Paul. We're jamming. Well, thank you, Mr. Drew, for inviting me on. Always good to talk to you. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast or any of the podcasts. If you're looking at YouTube, uh, they say smash the like button. Don't smash it. Just press it gently and refer to use as a link to all your friends. You can also look at us on our website, wingmenshow.com, W-I-N-G-M-E-N, show, S-H-O-W.com, all together, wingmenshow.com. And we hope to see you in the future. Thanks again, Mr. Drew. Oh, you're welcome. And we're still floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. May there be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men and women.